grab a cup of cozy and settle in with me. We're going to talk about evening routines and I'm going to take you step by step through my own evening routine. It is actually in the evening. I'm in northern Michigan right now and it's around the summer solstice and so days are a lot lighter, a lot longer up here. I'm going to share some ideas that maybe you want to implement into your own routine or just take away some ideas that will help you unwind and settle in before bed. Morning routines are huge in the productivity world. I'm sure if you've not read The Miracle Morning, you've probably heard of it. It made the rounds and was super trendy a few years ago, but I'm going to go on the record here and say your evening routine is way more important than your morning routine. I'm a huge proponent of morning routines. I have one, I love it, and if you want me to share it, comment below and let me know. But when it comes to evening routines, they set up your morning for success. So if you have a really off evening, then it throws off your morning, which throws off your entire day and the cycle continues. So if you're trying to establish a morning routine without success, I would say try establishing an evening routine first because that's gonna make the biggest difference. If you have struggled to practice or stick to an evening routine in the past, I have two tips for you to set you up for success. Number one is to make sure you're not cramming so much stuff into your evening routine. A lot of times, and I'm totally guilty of this, we watch other videos of evening routines and what other people try, we think we have to implement that as well. Before we know it, we have a stack of 10 things that we wanna do every single evening and it's not sustainable. So pare it down, be a minimalist when it comes to your evening routine and make sure that the things that you are doing are a huge priority for you and that there's not so much that you feel like you can't stick to it. The second tip is to not have a 15 to 20 minute increments of your evening routine. Like at 9.15, I'm going to shut down my screens. At 9.30, I'm gonna brush my teeth. At 9.35, I'm gonna wash my face. Maybe yours isn't that detailed, but oftentimes we get bogged down in those details and making sure that we have it like neatly structured out. What I recommend is that you have a start time for your evening routine and then an end time and then just an order of events in between that you can go through. So you know when you start, you know when you end, you know what you're doing in the middle and you don't have to worry if you get off schedule and then that ends up making you want to just throw the routine completely out the window. My evening routine starts at the nine o'clock hour. And that is when, if I haven't done this at the end of the workday, I set up my day in my daily planner. I just use a plain notebook. I set up my day, have my to-do list, call out any events from my Google calendar. I check that. I also check my master task list in Notion to see if I have any tasks on a specific due date that happens the next day. I'll leave a link to the video of my master task list below so you can watch that next. And I'm also filling out my health journal on Notion. So this is just a daily journal where I'm not doing like journaling per se. I do that a little bit later via paper and pen because I like that a lot better, but this is more just data trackings. So I'm adding two feelings for the day. I also add the time worked and then I add my workout, any shows that I had watched that day. I just like tracking those things. I don't know. It's weird, but I like seeing it. If you didn't know this about me already, I have the most adorable rabbit named Cody. He's eight years old and he is just my little grumpy bun. And so next I just check his water dish and make sure that he has enough water for the evening. I also give him his evening salad mix. It's usually romaine, sometimes spinach or other herbs that I have on hand. And then I head upstairs to change into my PJs and finish out the rest of my evening routine. And when I say upstairs, I guess I should put it in quotes. Technically, it's only three steps because I live in an RV, but that's how we differentiate upstairs and downstairs. I prefer to wash my hair at night. So every few nights I will do that. Tonight is not a hair washing night. So we're going to go straight into the skincare routine. I just turned 36 and so it is more important now than ever to have a good skincare routine. The first thing I do is take off my makeup from the day and I use this Clean It Zero Cleansing Balm. It smells amazing. I have tried so many different 
makeup remover bombs and this is the only one I found that does not mess with my eyes because I don't wear eyeliner typically but I always wear a mascara and you gotta get that like all that junk off and so this one I can just rub into like on my lids and through my eyelashes and it works great it doesn't hurt definitely prefer a cleansing balm over a liquid remover and then I follow it up with a double cleanse because all the makeup gurus are like you have to cleanse twice to make sure you get all that makeup off I just use a Cetaphil gentle foaming cleanser anything really for sensitive skin is what I prefer and you can't go wrong with a brand that's dermatologist recommended right isn't that what it says yeah number one dermatologist recommended there you go. And then it's time to put on the creams. So my late thirties and beyond creams are very important. I have heard a lot of people, a lot of people, I would say the beauty gurus that I follow say eye creams are not necessary, but I like, this is my Holy grail, the ROC retinal correction line smoothing eye cream. I have noticed a difference between not using it and using it. It does take a few months to see results, but I was just getting the creepiest lines under my eyes and it was really bothering me. And so I bought this, even though it's a little pricey and I tried it and I stuck with it because they had said, I think even like up to 12 weeks, you have to wait for the results. But when I run out of it and I don't have an extra one and I even go a week without using it, the crepiness is back. So that's one I cannot live without. For an all over moisturizer, I do a night cream from Aveeno. I am not brand loyal to this, basically anything that is thick and not Olay. <laughs> I don't know why, like all the Olay stuff, just it smells so perfumey. And so this doesn't even really have a smell. I don't even know if it's fragrance free. It probably is, but I also, just like the Cetaphil is good enough for dermatologists, it's good enough for me. If Avino is good enough for Jennifer uh, Aniston, it's good enough for me. It's really a very simple routine. I don't find that I need like a ton of stuff, at least right now. And I'm also more likely to stick to a skincare routine if there are not a lot of steps involved. So the last thing I do is just quickly brush my teeth put on some chapstick and then crawl into bed for my next phase of my evening routine. Once I get in bed, we're looking at between 9.30 and 10 p.m. at this point. This is when I put my phone away and say no screens for the rest of the night. So I just set it on my dresser across from my bed so I'm not tempted to touch it and plug it in and that's when I'm supposed to be done. I don't always stick to it, but that is the idea. Because I really notice huge restorative sleep benefits when I don't play on my phone in bed in the evening. And I actually read way more books. I did this experiment where I did a 30 day challenge back in April and I was supposed to be in bed at 9.30, no screens and reading. And I read eight books that month compared to the two or three that I usually finish. So I just have to keep reminding myself that even though I feel this pull towards the screen, it's so much better for me not to have it. And then once I get settled in, I have a little evening routine box that I pull out. It is nothing super pretty. It's just one of those photo boxes from Michael's when they had like a three for 10 sale. In this, I keep a few things that I wanna have on hand to just help me wind down at night. The first thing are my little eye drops. I had LASIK surgery year, I don't even know how many years ago, but one of the side effects was just dry eyes at night. And so I have those. And then I also put this lotion on. So it's the Gold Bond. It's specific night lotion that has melatonin in it. I don't know if it like, if I notice a difference when I use it or not for better sleep, but it smells nice. And then, this may be a little excessive, but I have three journals. I do not do all of them at once. So the reason why I have three is because I want to make journaling a habit and it can only be a habit if I can journal according to what my mood is. So let me explain. I have one blank journal from Promptly Journals that it's, it's old and dirty. 
I, I'm almost done with it though, which is very exciting to get a new journal, but it's a dot grid journal. It's blank. And I just, sometimes I'll write down a gratitude list. Sometimes I'll just process some emotions, write down what I'm feeling. I'll just make lists or draw like little diagrams. I don't, it is for like anything that's on my mind. So if I'm really feeling the need for a lot of space, I reach for that journal. If I want just to do a thankful list and I want more of a prompt, this is again from Promptly Journals as well. It's their year of gratitude journal, but I don't use it specifically for like an entire year. I just go through and it has different prompts. That's like, what act of kindness are you most grateful for? Or what did someone do for you this week that meant a lot to you? And so you can just write down a little thing that you're grateful for based on a prompt. And so that helps me if I really don't want to think, but still want to practice gratitude. And then if I want prompts, but I want a little bit more detail of the prompts, I use this full focus journal by Michael Hyatt. And every day has three pages. I almost thought it was four. So sometimes that feels a little excessive, but if I really want to process my day and I don't want like a blank page because I need help processing, then I can go through this and like what happened in the past day? What were my biggest wins? What lessons did I learn? What am I thankful for? What did I read about and learn? So we just have some different prompts in there that if I'm feeling that direction, then I will reach for this one. Oh, I almost forgot. I have to show you my favorite pen. So it's the Paper Mate Ink Joy Gel Pen. I love, this one's purple. My favorite is the blue and I buy a 12 pack on Amazon because I do not want to run out. It is the smoothest pen. And if you are a pen geek like I am, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Definitely try it. It may become your new favorite pen. And then the last part of my evening routine is reading. I mainly read on my Kindle. Sometimes if I have a paperback book that I'm going through, I will put it in the box, the evening box. But generally it's on Kindle because that's where I read fiction. And it's always fiction in the evening because I just need to escape and not think deeply about things. I subscribe to Kindle Unlimited. And if you're on the fence about it, I was too, but I find a lot of books through there. And I did a like comparison through like, what did it cost for a year of Kindle Unlimited versus how many books that I read from Kindle Unlimited. I kept track of all that and it was worth it. So they have so many books to read on there. And then I also supplement if it's not on Kindle Unlimited. Usually I can find it at the library and I use the Libby app attached with my library card. I usually read until about 10.30 at night. That's when I like to have the lights out. And usually I'm feeling pretty groggy at that point. So reading just helps me, again, unwind and get into that sleepy state mode. However, if I am not super sleepy yet, but I'm kind of tired of reading and I know I should turn out the lights and go to sleep, but I don't feel like I can, then I will grab my phone. Now, hear me out. I'll grab my phone and then I'll just turn on a podcast and play that like a 20 to 30 minute podcast. Usually it takes about 30 minutes for me to just listen and feel start to feel again that groggy phase and then it just either ends and I'm asleep and I don't listen to things that like business podcasts or anything. Absolutely not because I don't need to be thinking of new business ideas when I'm trying to go to sleep. And so that just helps me again, like settle my brain down. So it's not swirling with all these thoughts. Cause the, the last thing I want to do is lay there and just be thinking of all the things I should be doing because I can't fall asleep. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. Ow, my hip popped. I hope that was interesting for you to hear. My tea is very lukewarm at this point, but I hope you're inspired to implement some ideas into your own evening routine that you discovered here, or maybe something that you had tried in the past, but maybe something I said made you look at it a little bit differently. Again, make sure you're not cramming so much stuff to do in your evening routine, and that's going to help you be more successful just to prioritize the few things that you want to do well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.